Right now, most of us are using AI tools like Cursor, Windsurf, or GitHub Copilot to write code faster than ever. And that part works. But have you noticed we're generating way more code per pull request than before? PRs are bigger, more files change at once, and reviews are getting slower, not faster. AI helps you write code, but it doesn't help your team review it. And that's where the bottleneck just moved. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a tool that solves that exact problem. It's called CodeRabbit. It's not another AI code generator. It's an AI code reviewer that lives directly inside your pull requests. In this video, I'll show you how CodeRabbit reviews PRs inside GitHub, how it catches real issues with full repo context, how you can apply fixes with one click, and how to customize it using advanced rules with AST grep. Now, let me show you how this actually works. Okay, so here's the situation most teams are in. AI helps you write code faster, but faster generation doesn't automatically mean better code, right? What actually happens is more logic gets added per PR, reviewers have to reason about code they didn't write, and teams spend more time reviewing than implementing. AI generators don't enforce your team's standards, your architecture, or your internal guardrails. So even though code gets written faster, shipping reliable code doesn't. That's the gap we want to fill. The tool we'll use to fill that gap is CodeRabbit. It's an AI copilot built specifically for code reviews. It doesn't replace human reviewers. It doesn't generate features for you. Instead, it sits directly inside your pull request and reviews code the way a strong senior engineer would. It looks for things like logic issues, unsafe or inconsistent patterns, missed edge cases, performance problems, and general code quality regressions. And this isn't some toy project either. It's already used by over 100,000 open source projects, including large ones like Nux.js. So now let's actually look at it in action. All right, so here I'm inside a GitHub pull request. There is no new dashboard to learn or context switching. As soon as I open a PR like this, CodeRabbit automatically starts reviewing the changes. Take a look. The first thing you'll notice is that CodeRabbit doesn't just comment line by line. It understands which files changed, how those files relate to each other, and what the intent of the PR is. For example, this PR touches a service layer, a controller, and a shared utility. Instead of treating these as isolated changes, CodeRabbit reviews them together. That's important because most real bugs don't live in a single file. Here's a comment CodeRabbit left. Notice what it's doing. It references a change in this file, connects it to behavior in another file, and explains the downstream impact. You can see that it's not just giving syntax warnings, but it's giving logic level feedback. This is the kind of thing that normally only shows up after a long review, or worse, in production. Now here I'm gonna show you one of its more practical features. When CodeRabbit suggests a fix, you don't have to copy the suggestion, switch editors, manually rewrite the code, and push another commit. Instead, you can accept the suggestion and commit it with one click. Let me show you. CodeRabbit generates the commit, and that's it. This alone saves a ton of review time. Think about what this means for your team. Instead of reviewers spending time on obvious issues, missing edge cases, or inconsistent patterns, they can focus on architecture, design decisions, and whether the solution actually makes sense. That's how reviews get faster and better. One really important thing to understand is how CodeRabbit reviews code. This isn't shallow pattern matching. It pulls in a lot of context, like surrounding files, previous changes in the repo naming conventions, architectural patterns, and even how your team responds to comments over time. That's why the feedback feels relevant instead of generic. And over time, as your team interacts with it, the reviews actually get better, which brings us to customization. All right, now I wanna slow down here for a second because the customization is one of the more powerful part CodeRabbit can do. So instead of just saying, yeah, you can add rules, let's actually try it out. Before we write anything, quick context. AST grep doesn't look at your code as text. It looks at the structure of your code. So we're not saying find this string, we're saying find this kind of logic in this place. So first, in the root of the repo, I'm going to create a folder called rules. This is just where all our AST rules are going to live. Nothing fancy yet. Now, before touching YAML, we need to answer one question. What rule do we actually care about? Let's say our team has a rule like controllers should never touch the database directly. Super common, everyone agrees on it. But it still gets violated, especially by AI generated code. So let's encode that. I'm going to create a new file called nodb in controller.yaml. And yeah, this is just YAML, don't worry. It looks scarier than it is. All right, so let me walk through this piece by piece. First, we give the rule an ID and tell it what language we're working with. Then we add a message. This message is what CodeRabbit will actually show in the PR review. So this isn't just a warning, this is how we explain the rule to the developer reading the comment. Now, here's the actual rule. 
What we're saying is find a database call, but only if it happens inside a controller. So instead of blocking database access everywhere, we're scoping it. That scoping is the key idea. This part is really important. We're not doing string matching on file contents. We're not relying on comments. We're not trusting naming conventions alone. We're saying only apply this rule when the code lives inside the controller's layer. That's what makes us different from a linter. And this is also why AST-based rules don't explode with false positives. All right, now that the rule exists, we just need to tell CodeRabbit to use it. So in .codeRabbit.yaml, we add the rules directory under the ASCREP tool configuration. Once this is checked in, that's it. Every pull request from now on gets reviewed against this rule automatically. No one has to remember it. No one has to enforce it manually. Now let's actually see what happens. I open a pull request that violates this rule. And you'll see CodeRabbit leave a comment saying essentially, hey, this controller is accessing the database directly. Move this logic into a service. This isn't a suggestion. This is a rule we defined. And the really important part is, it doesn't matter whether this code was written by a human or generated by an AI. The rule applies either way. This is the part I want to land on. Most teams rely on tribal knowledge, code review fatigue, or one senior engineer catching everything. AST grep lets you take those unwritten rules and make them enforceable. So instead of hoping reviews catch architectural drift, you prevent it automatically. So what do teams actually get out of this? Teams using CodeRabbit report up to 50% faster reviews, fewer bugs reaching production, and far less back and forth in pull requests. Developers can move faster without sacrificing quality, even when using AI-generated code. If you're already using AI to write code, but reviews are slowing you down, this is absolutely worth trying. CodeRabbit installs directly into your repo, works inside your existing PR workflow, and starts adding value on the very next pull request. Give it a try on one of your repositories and see how much review time it saves your team. If this video was useful, like it, subscribe for more developer-focused walkthroughs, and I'll see you in the next one.